part two, time to get on with that handle. God, I was still kicking myself about that. I didn't have any more rosewood and some of the wood, I had this little bit of, I think it was mahogany that when I uh, glued the G10 liner onto it, I stupidly didn't clamp onto a flat surface. And as the epoxy dried, it's given it a little bit of a bow. So I gave up on that. Yeah, it's not been an easy road this, but I did have a little bit of, well, two scales of something called X grip, which I think is a sort of Makata style handle. It's got a lovely sort of mahogany swirl pattern. It's actually called mahogany X grip. And I'm just going to try and go, well, a little bit radical. I put some liners in it, which I'm told they were red, but as I've uh, began to do a little bit of sanding, they've got <laughs> quite pink. But if anything else, you can be rest assured there's only going to be one knife like this in the world. <laughs> so I'm almost at, well, I'm at where I was last time with uh, everything cut out and uh, I've double checked my drilling and that's absolutely fine this time. So I'm now going to just um, do that bit of sanding where I chamfer the edges um, of the uh, handle scales that go against the blade. I'm going to get it on camera, but it's awful stuff to sand this Makata and it gives off really bad fumes and dust and I don't want my camera to uh, get covered in dust because it's a very still evening. I'm doing it just outside my garage here. So uh, I'll film it from a little bit of a distance and hopefully, uh, well, you've seen it now, but hopefully the, uh, the zoom will um, be sufficient for you to see what's going on. Let's get on with it. Eighty to one fifty. That's got a really lovely finish just on that little mini disc sander. I bought that. It, it costs less than forty pounds, and it's just fantastic. I wouldn't like to do any really heavy duty work with it, but cracky uh, for something like this job. It's absolutely perfect. So I've just got some little strips now of 600, 800 and 1200. I'll just um, give some hand sanding to these ends and then I'll get it on the buffer and it should be to a nice finish, ready for the glue up. What an amazing finish. Wow, that's quite a finish that. It it just feels like just glass. It's lovely. So that's brought these to a finished state. Um, I'm now going to, I can take these safely out and I'm going to make some little divots in here now for the uh, epoxy to um, grab a hold of when I actually start gluing the uh, the knife in. So I'll get that done this evening. It's uh, getting on a little bit late now. I've got a few family duties to be getting on with. Um, I'll make those divots and then uh, I may even do the glue up tonight if I can get away with it. Let's see how things go. I'll make the divots now anyway. <laughs> God, it's exciting. <laughs> I'm shortly going to do the glue up, but I need to get everything together first. I've taped up the blade, um, means of protecting it from any stray epoxy, but also I'm going to be doing a lot of maneuvering, so I don't want to get my fingers near the actual sharp bit. I made uh, a load of random sort of divots in here, and I've got the vacuum cleaner on uh, the holes to get the worst of it out, but I do have some acetone here, which I'll use to clean everything up. I still need to cut myself a very short uh, length for the thong tube of this. It's six and a half mil thick brass tubing with a one mil thick wall. So it'll come up to a nice sort of finish when I sort of polish that up uh, as part of the handle shaping process. And I'm gonna use this. I, I tried all sorts of different epoxies and the important thing is to get an epoxy with a bit of a working time rather than the very fast setting stuff. And I find that I get a good 15 minutes worth of um, 
time to sort of reposition stuff, tighten up and so on with this Gorilla Glue and it really does set extremely hard. And finally, I'm going to use these um, loveless bolts in the main pin sort of area of the knife. Now, what happens is this threaded part goes into one of the pins, one of the four mil holes I've drilled, but I'm going to counter bore just into that first segment there enough to sink one of these a little way in so that eventually I can, that'll sink in, do the same to the other side. That one will screw on and sink in as well because I'll counter bore that side. And then as part of the shaping process, again, I can chop those off and they will shape really nicely to an, a, a really smooth brass pin. And as I said, yeah, well, that's my sort of bracing um, bit of tube for the moment, but that will just eventually go in nicely like that. And I'll have a, yeah, you get, a, get an idea of the way the uh, thong tube will look there with a nice sort of thick wall. I like the look of that. So I'll get these counterboard and then I'll clean everything with acetone and we'll get ready to do the glue up. Gloves essential. <laughs> Feel like OJ. <laughs> Look, the glove doesn't fit. Oh, yes, it does. Anyway, enough of that. I'm just going to put my knife in this rubber jawed vice here so I can work on that. Put a bit on the nice scales, maybe a bit of overkill, but you never know. Thing is not to panic. I've got a, I've got some working time with that epoxy, and I want to get this right. In there, and then a little bit of epoxy on the thong tube. Please go in, and that's in nicely there. A bit of a panic there, thinking I hadn't drilled that long enough. Good. Enough. What I'm going to do now is just go around and wipe any excess epoxy off because it just adds to the workload on the sanding but there's not much there I can see a little bit just come out on the front of these tapered bits here so what I'm going to do have this ready is a tiny bit of WD-40 on a cotton bud or q-tip whatever and just oh, but it's not too bad For extra security during the drying process, I think I'm just going to clamp it. These aren't particularly strong clamps, but they just give me that peace of mind in case the loveless bolts for some reason haven't nipped tightly enough. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Well, it's taken a while, but I'm, I'm back in my comfort zone. <laughs> That's gluing up. I'll just uh, release it and... Uh, Show it, not gluing up, that's uh, all set up now to uh, dry overnight. 
you can see they're quite prominent the loveless bolts there but it doesn't matter I'll just uh, saw them off uh, before I begin the shaping process I'm not convinced on the pink the jury is definitely out on that one but we'll see anyway that's enough for tonight it's late and uh, once that's set um, it's just the handle shaping process, which, yeah, it's a little bit long-winded, but, you know, you have to be methodical. I'm going to start on the grinder and get it um, ground down to at least the blade um, profile, um, smooth off these hard edges on the grinder as well, as much as I dare, and then um, begin this hand sanding process, probably up to about an 800 to 1,000 grit, and that should be sufficient then to get it on the buffing wheel um, for the final sort of finish. <sighs> it's been quite a journey, hasn't it? Great. So, good night, folks. I'll see you in the morning. So it's another day, and this is glued and dried. I'm not going to keep talking to the camera between each process. So I'll just tell you what I'm about to do to it. I'm going to... Um, use a hacksaw to take the most of the sort of um, bulk of these pins out um, because I think it'll give my sander a bit of a hard time if I tried to go through through these all the way. Um, I'm then going to use probably a 40 grit um, sanding belt to get down to the tang on this and then just gradually work up on the grits on my belt grinder. I can't sort of talk you through each little bit because I'm going to have my respirator on. I mean, taking it off, talking to you, putting it on. So that's what I'm going to do. Hacksaw these off and then just go up through the grits on my belt grinder and hopefully come up with a decent looking handle. Not convinced about these pink liners yet. We'll have to see what it looks like on the, uh, on the finished product. So that's what we have so far. I'm trying to show you as much as I can of the sanding process on the camera, but it is that messy, the Mikata or X grip or whatever it is when it comes off, that it's really making my camera dusty and I'm I'm worried that with the opening and closing of the camera it's going to get inside the barrel the dust so do forgive me I'll just keep sort of talking to you every so often gives me something to work to This is where we are so far, so I'll keep my respirator on. Started curving it a little bit. Got the Coke bottle shape. And uh, yeah, it's going okay at the moment. I'm just uh, being careful not to go too far, so I'm going to make up for whatever in hand sanding, but it's beginning to feel like a knife. I've actually gone as far as I dare with, hand, uh, with the grinder sanding. Um, I could go further, but I'm just not skilled enough with it to be intricate enough to. Uh, and it, I'm 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 scared basically of going too far, so I think I'll just uh, get on now with the sandpaper. And uh, yeah, I think it's coming on well. It's just a case of uh, spending a little bit of uh, care and attention with the hand sanding now.
There we are folks, I've been through up to 800 grit and uh, I think it looks really nice. It's quite a um, funny material, McCart, it goes very dull um, until you get it on the buffer, but let's get that on the buffer. So there's a before shot. <laughs> And let's have a go. And there we are. My first ever knife from um, scratch. I feel a bit emotional. Um, sorry. That's just um, something I never thought I'd be able to do. Sorry about that. I, I just feel, um, I don't know. don't know why. It's just, just something I just never thought I'd be able to do. Anyway, that is what I started with. Bit of 1084 steel. And that little beauty is what I've got. And this deserves a really nice leather sheath. I'll get on with that. I finally got over the elation of making that knife. It's taken me an age to clear up this garage after that sanding and uh, even the grinding outside of that sort of resin micata handle. Gosh, it leaves a trail of dust absolutely everywhere. I'm glad I was wearing the respirator. I'm going to move on now to making the knife sheath. I mentioned in my first video that I was thinking about doing a fire steel um matching with the knife handle where you saw what happened to the knife handle and i've decided i'm just going to make a nice sort of bushcraft sheath without the file st fire steel for this uh, knife and so uh, yeah i'll take you through the process of that the first thing i've got to do is make a template so uh, i get that right i don't want to start cutting into leather without uh, any idea of uh, my shaping and so on so I've got a folded bit of paper here and I've just drawn the outline of my blade and a fair bit of the handle and just picked a few points from here for distance wise because this is going to be the welt area in here and then brought it with a curve back down to the middle here and then I'll unfold that and I'll obviously have a symmetrical pattern. Paper here and I'm just going to make this a sort of variable bit that I can take when I know when I've got it exactly right. This little bit of paper here. I want my sheath to end pretty much just at this uh, pin here. Maybe a little bit further up. Which I'll do. I'll uh, use the dog. And I want my loop there. So there we go. I've got a sort of working model of the sheath exactly the size I want it. Got this really thick piece of veg tan leather. I think it's about almost four, four mils thick. I'll put my template on here. Nice piece without any marks on the other side. And just draw around it. One thing I want to remember is not to go right angles on these edges, so I want to do nice curves there. And I'm going to get a ruler. Continue those bits up just so that I know they're nice and straight. I 
Right, I'll get this cut out. So there's the template cut out. I just need to make a couple of grooves down the middle here now and wet it so that I can just begin to get some sort of bending moment in there because at the moment it's just absolutely stiff as a board. So uh, yeah, two or three grooves up here and I'll uh, wet the crease. Next thing is to make the welt which will be glued in here. I'm just gonna trace around the outer edge of my sheet here to make the welt. Doesn't have to be exact as long as I get a, this. These two bits have to be exact, but whatever happens here doesn't really matter. So I've cut out this piece and I'll just match it up against the sides here. Lay my knife on exactly where I want it. And then I can mark where I'm going to cut out the welt. Looks a funny shape but I'm going to do some double stitching in here at the bottom of the sheath and have a couple of lanyard holes so that's why I've got the extra bulk here at the bottom. Good, so that will fit in the bottom there. I'm going to cut that off to a curve, I'm going to dye everything but leaving an area, which I shall do in pencil, leaving an area where this um, loop's going to go. But I'll first cut this curve out now. And I'm just going to make a little pencil mark where to avoid with the uh, dye. Then I'll dye it up, then i go to bed. <laughs> I haven't got a scything tool, but I do have a very sharp blade that I just made. Idiot, shouldn't have died there, but I'll just give it a good scoring. Arr, getting carried away. Back with you, just, uh, <laughs> it's the next evening, a bit of a, Stressful couple of hours. My, my son fell off his bike, but uh, he was all right. A few, and uh, but uh, he trashed my GoPro. And but I, I, I sort of learned a lot about parenting there because I I didn't go GoPro trashed. And um, the most important thing was that he was okay. And uh, so he was so upset about trashing this GoPro. And I said, look, the main thing is you're all right. Um, but I got it back and I was just looking at it going, you know, and then I thought, actually, I'm, I think I put a screen protector on that. And I sort of put my fingernail and they peeled it off and it was absolutely pristine. So all it needs is another one of those screen protectors. I know it's a bit of a waffle thing to say, but it's just uh, something that happened and made me think that, you know, that's real karma. You know, I, I didn't get a tall cross. I felt inside about my GoPro but you know it's it's pristine and he's all right and there you go anyway well, this is about making a knife um gosh I've got such a list of things to do with with making something like this it's very easy to go a little bit a couple of steps too far and then realize you can't undo what you've done and to, to do another bit that you should have done before, if you see what I mean. So it's good to have everything written in an order. So I've got my next 12 uh, instructions. I won't talk too much to the camera. I'll just get on with it, uh, talk a little bit. I'm going to use my phone to um, uh, 
do the sort of close-up stuff and uh, I'll just sort of talk to that the audio won't be quite as good but um, what you want to see is stuff happening rather than me talking talking about me talking let's get on with it Next thing I'm going to do is bevel the edges of the loop and also the top of the sheath because once this is all folded together it's very difficult to get to those bits and so uh, yeah I'll make these almost to the finish look before uh, I fold it over and uh, start the main glue up. I've taken off the clamp now and that's nice and solid. Obviously got to do some tidying up with the dyeing and also re-dye where I've burnished the edges here. Well, beveled the edges, sorry. And then, so I'm gonna put a few sort of pricking iron marks, reasonably deep, but not all the way through, and then uh, drill the holes and then sew this up. So I'll just put a few marks in there for now. Ow! Good. And I'll just make a saddle stitch with this. Um, you saw me do this on my previous sheath. I won't talk you through it too much, but basically two needles at the end of one piece of thread. And you just feed one through the hole and then you feed the other one back through where that one's just come through and continue on. So that's all sewn in. It's now time to glue in the welt and then I can glue up the whole sheath. Um, I've again scored in a sort of crisscross pattern on the shiny side of the leather so that can adhere to that nicely and I'm not going to bother with this um, the rough side because that's got enough sort of uh, friction on it to adhere to the other side so yeah, this has to be done pretty much right first time because once this uh, leather bond glue is on there, there's it, it there's, well, there's no margin for error. It just grabs it and you can't move it again. So <laughs> I'll glue this up. spray water on here. Careful not to go into that glued area. So 
inside just a thing we have to think firstly about the project and secondly about the camera to get it right. Good. <laughs> Welcome back. I've taken the clamps off and it's molded and stuck down nicely. The welt is just about in line with the main length. It's just come out about a millimetre at the end, which is fine. I'll just sand that down. Likewise, a little bit extra on there, which I'll also sand down. I've drilled a couple of holes in my dangler strap here, four to be exact, and that'll uh, take the snap fasteners that I'm just going to attach on now so that you can unsnap it and put it on your belt and then snap it back together again. Hopefully, great. That's the nice belt loop. I'm pleased with that. Good, and I'll polish that up when I polish the rest of the sheath. Oh, complete pretty pleased with that that took absolutely ages <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is soak this um, and whilst it's soaking I'm going to cover my precious knife in cling film and then I'm going to wet form it and leave it overnight to dry I feel like I'm on the home straight finally it's been quite a journey with this knife. I've now covered it in cling film with a, especially a bit of attention towards the, um, the point because I've, I've doubled and trebled there because as I push it in, I don't want it to obviously go through the cling film. Here is my pouch, it's a pouch, sheath. I've just been um, replying to a few comments on my EDC pouch <laughs> on my last YouTube video, so I've, I've got that on my mind. Right, here we go. Get it the right way around. I'll pop that in there, and hopefully, yeah, that's going to be a oh, that's going to be a nice fit. That's how I want it to go, um, and I'm just going to sort of massage it. Around the handle bit here. And sort of form it. 
is what I'm trying to do to the the contours of the handle here and when I've done that I'll uh, just put it somewhere warmish to thoroughly dry but uh, at the moment it's looking like a nice shape so there we are time for putting that to bed time for my bed and we'll uh, Check it out in the morning. Night all. New haircut. <laughs> um, well, what a journey this has been so far, folks. I've now got the sheath with the knife in. It's got the cling film. I'm gonna now take the knife out for the first time. Um, I'm not gonna do the final click test until I've that comes out really nicely until I've um, got the sheath up to the sort of standard that I want with polishing which I'll do now and then I'll take off this plastic wrap the cling film and we'll put it all together and that should be the last little bit the last phase Right, I'll get this sorted. I'm starting off with, it's just I use G-Wax. I just use this for my, my walking boots and I give it a nice thick coating and then use either a heat gun or a hair dryer. I've got a heat gun, be careful if you're gonna use a heat gun, have it a long way away because they're very powerful. Um, let, and then just um, sort of use a um, fiber, part, fiber cloth to uh, work that in. And then the final coat is going to be with, excuse me, I've left it over here, this uh, Carnuba cream, which gives it a really nice shine and protective finish as well. So let's get on with that. Okay, folks, I think that's in focus. There's my knife. Let's see how this works. <laughs> there you go. Let's do that once more with feeling. Are we ready? Oop. There we are. That, as they say, is that. <laughs> what a journey that has been to make that knife. I really like the, the fact that I, the pink um, linings that I put in, I think really work well with the red stitching that I put in. That's that is a Nice little outfit. Well, thank you very much for joining me on that quite a long journey. It's really quite an achievement for me. I, I really never thought I could do anything like that. Certainly build an eye from that. That's from the same bar as I've now cut and finish this knife and that's even got my maker's mark on there the logo so from this <laughs> to this with a bit of work it's been really rewarding well thanks for remaining with me for this video it's been great having you aboard to uh, enjoy the journey enjoy the journey with me i'd very much look forward to seeing you again thanks <laughs>